Welcome back, Wing It Podcast, GooseDigital.com. Episode, Alex, I don't even remember our episodes anymore. 29? 20, 29. Are we in the 20s or the 30s? I'm going to shoot for 29 and you're going to bring me back down to reality. Hmm. Who do we have? Chris O'Neill. Robin Kroll. Kevin Butler. Michael Turksani. Guys, okay. it's been a while. Yeah. I've missed you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has It has been. We, uh, we were... We were taking a pause. We were. Right? Mm. We, we needed some inspiration. We needed some inspiration, and now we're, we're going to figure... Actually, that's not the case. We've been so busy that... And that's not an excuse, Chris. Okay? Because we've been, we've been telling that to our, our prospects. <laughs> You're too busy to do marketing and sales or... Look, Robin and, and I spent some, stop. We spent some time this week at Elevate here in Toronto, and we I'm, did. I'm inspired. Yeah. I feel inspired about a lot of things from this week. Mm-hmm. Um... All right, so this is uh, this is going to be a different one, and we're going to try this out because this is content marketing 2019, I think. 2.0, no, 3.0? Mm. Responsive content marketing. Yeah, reactive. Mm. Um, Sarah McNamara from... Maybe McNamara? Mm, you tell me. That's McNamara, Mike. Is it? Okay, sorry, Sarah. Blew that up pretty bad. Um, well, Sarah is at uh, Cloudera right now. Been been at a number of different organizations, Pardot certified, and um, a number of different marketing automation platforms. So we, we follow her. I follow her on on LinkedIn. Put together a, an intriguing post on the support provided by marketing automation platform vendors. So that got us thinking, I, I replied to the post, that got us thinking and sort of talking about this because we, you know, we've seen the support evolve over the years in all of these different systems, all the kind of top five systems, top four systems. And, um, and we know the role that kind of support plays. And we thought this was interesting to sort of um, compare and contrast our experience as well as um, talk a bit about what you should expect, I think, from these vendors and what. So she goes on to say that, like, you know, building out a, a capable marketing automation practice is expensive. I mean, the rules now are getting, um, especially in sort of competitive areas, getting expensive to have a senior map uh, on your team. And um, the vendors themselves offer a level of support, but the sort of conversation is around should vendors charge more money and provide even more support or should they charge less money and you get your support from either internal consultants or partners so i'm going to open it up a bit and just say like what's maybe our experience been so far with sort of frontline support on some of these platforms maybe kev start with you yeah and we've seen this with a number of clients too across different industries but i think in my mind there's a really big difference between um, sort of product and feature support and strategic support. And I don't really know if it's reasonable to expect uh, a Salesforce, an Act on a Mercado, whoever, to to go in and understand their client's business relative mm-hmm. to the role technology is supposed to play in fueling growth and, and customer comms and, and all that stuff, right, I think. So that's part one. Part two of my thoughts would be this is a relatively emerging or, or new industry, and so we don't have um, part no ecosystems totally fleshed out whereas you see in more mature industries you do and then the role of a partner to help bring that strategy to life knowing the tools technologies and being experts in a particular vertical or two that's really where it comes in so i think what we're feeling is an increased need for um call it support like consultants and partners to continue to flesh out with the end user what they're trying to do that's a lot there but yeah i like i like the call out because we're seeing a lot of people who are losing their marketing automation resource. So all of a sudden, mm-hmm. like we got a call because uh, such and such a person left. left. Yeah. So I wonder if they left because they were being asked to do stuff with the marketing automation platform. So there's an idea that somebody had that was like, you know, good idea, sounded good, 
But to make that happen within the marketing automation platform, which is, again, as Kevin's saying, is like it's it's new. It needs to sort of tie into all of these other MarTech pieces that are out there. It's like it's it's not easy. It's not mm-hmm. something that you can just sort of bring a, a smart technical resource in and just make that happen. So, you know, we're seeing a lot of uh, Turn. uh, turnover, yeah. a lot of turnover in that uh, in that area. Um, and, and so, you know, again, we, we get sort of brought in sometimes with, um, you know, I don't want to say a half baked strategy, but I want to say something that is, um, that needs some more work, something that needs to be maybe a little bit, there needs to be a little bit more. We almost kind of take it back to the beginning and say, yeah, I mean, how many times have we got, uh, got a call and, you know, we've had named the platform for a year and a half and that individual brought it in they're no longer here and we were kind of just getting rolling or to the point where now we're sort of have to prove the value of, of this thing yeah. and and they're gone and then we're looking at it saying well on top of that i think you kind of need to sort of go back to the drawing board on some of these things because they were either flawed to begin with or um they're never going to work so even um in organizations where the the either the people or person who brought in the technology mm-hmm. um even then, a lot of times the original vision isn't fulfilled. Either things have changed or that original vision was a bit... Um, there were some immediate use cases. Then once those were accomplished, the, the rest of the vision hadn't been painted. And I think, again, it's these these people, they have a day job and they don't know the tools inside and out to know all the things that it could do to support the business. They do know the business challenges. But again, they, they, they don't know the tools. Like Very rarely do we speak to... Right prospects, clients, anyone's in there, and they say, we know this tool inside and out and all the things it can do. I think that's our role is to help bring some of those needs to life. And I'm going to go back to uh, Chris's point about strategy, right? Because this whole, you know, you flip on a switch and suddenly this technology is, you know, driving growth or doing everything that you need it to mm-hmm. do and it just doesn't happen that's not how it that's not how it works um you know you need to have a strategy which is aligned with the business but it's also a strategy that can then be implemented through the technology um and yeah. and i've yeah. never seen i've never seen that that work in one single person right there it's it's, it's a different skill set Um, And I just think of how we work with our clients on really understanding their strategy and then, you know, figuring out how to implement the technology. And if you think, you know, calling up a customer support um, at, uh, you know, where your map platform is, that that person doesn't understand the strategy. So you're asking them to resolve something, but they don't know what you're really trying to accomplish. So then then they get frustrated because they're like, well, you know, I thought that program was supposed to work this way. And it's like, well, yeah, but you're, you know, so you're putting them in a really tough spot, mm-hmm. I think. To, now, if the system's buggy or if it's That's a training a thing, issue, I right? think. But support as right. a broad term for, let's just say marketing technology, it's just, it's about the worst word ever. Because what does it yeah. mean? Does it mean strategic, technical, yeah. problem solving? Yeah, it's usually, and, and typically in, in a, a software company uh, or a technology company, support is going to be making sure the functionality actually works sure. right you push this sure. button it actually happens something deploys it's not about saying well is my strategy actually going to work um by pushing mm-hmm. this button that that that's not support now something else chris that you mentioned i, I kind of wanted to go back to was um churn and sort of reasons for churn and i think part of it could be you know someone's in a role it's a really tough role they're not in a position to really be successful in the role but i also think probably more common is the um, the new battlefront for talent, right? And people who are really good at these platforms, they're being called and poached and recruited. Um, and those are high paying jobs with lots of opportunity. And it's a competitive marketplace to go and acquire that talent. And there aren't that many of them out there. So if you are, I don't know, like a tech startup, you're well funded and you want to go build an in-house marketing ops team with specializations around CRM, marketing automation, and possibly emerging other marketing technologies you're willing to pay for that and so yeah or or you know i think that that's also you know we'll 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 stick on the on the map platform but maybe we can talk later about um alternatives you know like which is where i think organizations like ours coming in to sort of help 
mitigate that risk mm-hmm. to some degree, right? If you are mm-hmm. if you are going to build that out, you, and and because I don't think the I think it's hard to keep these people in inside the business. Sometimes they they get exactly. in there and then they. But if you look at um, uh, what the vendor should do, I think it is reasonable for them to offer quality support and potentially other options. Like I know not all map vendors are going to go this direction, but I think you can have a higher onboarding service that maybe is a paid service, which we've seen out there, obviously. Um, and maybe some other strategic accelerators that could come up where you're brought, may they bring consultants that they trust or maybe on their team to help in that early stage of planning. Uh, you don't see that as often, you mm-hmm. know, we've done a bit of that with act on to, um, carve off six that makes sense. Um, but I think that's ultimately part of the challenge. If we say, and we see this every day with our clients, so a new customer onboarding drip, you know, and that's a program that marketing's goal is to develop, you know, the the new customers that come through and whatever their strategic strategic objective is in that base. Well, that varies heavily from customer to customer. So even even calling up a vendor and saying, I'm trying to build a new customer drip and I'm having an issue, it's like it's a can of worms. Mm-hmm. Like, well, what what exactly what does that mean to, do, to your right? business, right? And yeah, if you've got, you know, CS perfect CRM, half use CRMs, you know, data that's this or that, like it really, it really does, um, I think make a, a challenge for a vendor to offer, you know, the level of support that people might. And we're seeing that in how frustrated they are looking at moving systems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you could almost say that, um, you know, whether it was, uh, you know, 30 years ago, it was accounting systems or maybe 20 years ago, 10 years ago or 15 years ago, it was a CRM, but the same process takes place. The first thing is let's get one of these systems in here because it's going to, you know, make everything easier and smoother and better. So they bring it in. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. They have to redo it. They choose another one, whatever. They go through that process. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the CRM. It was like, oh, CRM, that was the newest thing to have. It was a platform you could use. People brought it in. They didn't properly support it. As a result, there was churn there. There was all kinds of learning and so forth. So now what do you have? You got CRM administrators, uh, you know, sort of it's it's a new industry. Yeah. The same thing. We're just in the very early stage on the marketing automation side. We're in that early stage of people testing and trying and seeing what do they need to invest in in order to make it work properly. I think we're going to wind up in the same situation, which is you need to properly support that marketing automation platform through the strategy Mm -hmm. that you that you have already gone through with your accounting system and your CRM. And yep. it all comes together. Yeah, and I think you know similarly on the CRM or some of those you know other systems in the in, inside the business that have really taken hold over the years. I think you are seeing a graduated approach to resource um, to, to the cost of those resources now. Like you know, yeah, superstar map resource that can pull everything together and have everything from a strategic to tactical question and 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 draw a project up. Those are hard to come by right now, mm-hmm. and and I think what we've done successfully in our business is we, you know, you know, the only way we can sort of operate is to have graduate levels of roles here. Mm-hmm. So I think there is a world where it's kind of maybe where I disagree a little bit with with the conversation about needing a super high priced resource. I think you know companies need to be careful that they're not held hostage by really high priced resources, but at the same time that they get that strategic support, which is where I like the idea for some vendors to offer that because I think they can bring it in in a smaller chunk. It's not a, you know, 80, 80, 100. I don't know what kind of salary ranges are out there in, in the U.S. where it could be very expensive to have these resources. You know, it might be a $8,000 engagement where you can sit down with somebody senior and plot that out and allow your your team of of uh, more intermediate marketers to play a level of a role there right kev yeah i was just thinking and we've kind of talked about the themes chris talked about just now we've done that in the past too where we said you know in in five ten years time you're going to have marketing automation admins internally for large enterprise organizations and i think if you scroll through i'll just use salesforce as an example right you see like salesforce administrator but you might even see things like because they're about 10 15 years ahead of where marketing automation is from an adoption standpoint, you might see Salesforce junior administrator, right? So Mm -hmm. to your point around tiered sort of levels of experience, so you could say, well, you know, our organization doesn't have an appetite to go and hire 
a, a super admin of Marketo, but maybe we want like a junior Marketo admin and we will empower that individual with like a sort of like a, a connection to a consultancy or an agency with expertise where it's like that lifeline where they have support for things they need, do more with augmentation or even on a higher strategic level, whatever, right? Yeah, and I was thinking exactly along those lines that, you know, we, we talk about this this one individual, but perhaps that's not the solution, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a, a, a two-tiered or, or more of a team approach, and it's similar to what we do as well, is that we have, um, you know, there's the strategy, and then there's the technology, but if they're working together, you really have the best of both worlds. And so if you think of from a support perspective, um, you can have people who have that deep understanding of the platform, mm -hmm. but then you have that value-added service that's the strategy. And um, being able to provide both of those, that, that's really the, the best solution, right? I have a question for you guys. I'm turning the tables on Mike, but I was mm -hmm. having this conversation with um, someone the other day, and we were talking about the right mix, and I think it varies organization to organization depending on internal skill sets and expertise, but... We both agreed that the right solution is probably a combination of internal skills as mm -hmm. well as outsourced. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the in-source, outsource conversation, but what is that right balance? Like, how do you answer that if someone asks? Maybe I'll start with Mike. Um, yeah, well, I think it um, it's, it's a good question. I think, you know, outsourcing your strategy is, is, a, challenging, is a challenging one, I think. Mm -hmm. You can well have, actually let's say just outsourcing the execution like the technical elements of these these platforms. Oh, just uh, just the this the outsourcing. Um, I think like how you know how we approach it. So I would go with how we typically approach these situations. That um, you should look at outsourcing the most challenging components, so the hardest things to insource, right? So mm -hmm. building emails, tweaking emails, building simple landing pages. Outsourcing that can be great, and, and maybe that's a bandwidth or a team aug, like you said, just to sort of provide um, bench if you're, if you're going through a project. But that's the easiest thing to insource, right? You can bring people almost out of school to be all over creating very engaging um, content and, and, and the creative and, and, the, and the related around it. Um, trying to insource, you know, data integration and trying to insource kind of complex programs or um the right approach to activating kind of an audience i think that that that'll be harder for a lot of companies right and that's probably where when they hire a marketo admin or a salesforce admin and that's kind of soup to nuts doing most of that and then they that person leaves now they're really stuck because they've lost mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. um and that's i think where the value proposition and i think have you made a point earlier about the partner ecosystems yeah, that's really the value proposition of a more mature partner environment is that, you know, they're not just there to execute what you require to have done. If you position it more along the lines of this is a SLA for mm -hmm. us to have continuity over a long period of time in this area, and maybe we'll lean on them a lot for a particular quarter and a whole lot less the next quarter. But if that partner is truly and acting more like a managed services provider, they're going to have elements within their business that ensure they can pick up where you left off. That's documentation. That's mm -hmm. the systems that, that you would have as a managed, managed service provider to have that umbilical cord or that SLA behind it. So I think that that's a model that's probably new to this industry. There's a lot of, hey, do my project or, you know, we're super busy and outsource a bunch of work. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and it hasn't evolved to your point, Chris, yet to that point where, and you made it as well, Kev, around the partner ecosystems to say, well, that's the type of partner. I think there's probably a lot of partners that need to be fired. I think there's still a relatively easy benchmark to get partnerships. And we're seeing some vendors wipe away a ton of partners um, or make that bar way harder to get you mm -hmm. know, that partner status so they can trust that referring these people in um, which we've seen in other more mature industries. That's a good answer. I don't know what you guys would 
answer now. Mike took all the good parts. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, I was going to answer it a slightly different way, oh. only in oh. that I don't think the, um, you know, the in-source, outsource, instead of, you know, thinking of that sort of like a dividing line, but it can think about it as a progression as well. And that's something that we always talk about with our customers as well, mm -hmm. is that it could be, you know, to get up and running, to get everything executed, let's say for the first 12 months, it might make sense to outsource that. Mm -hmm. But gradually, as there are some more repetitive processes and as an, an internal team starts Starts to learn, mm -hmm. they can gradually bring things back in house, and that that's another way of looking at it. Do you know what's interesting is we've seen this with a few of our clients, but I kind of felt a few years ago I would have made a bet that we'd see it a lot more, which is we'd be involved in some of the job creation or like the mm -hmm. elements of various roles that are going to be in, put into growing departments that would incorporate some of the things that the agency did initially to your point right we haven't done that a whole lot in some cases we've even been part of maybe just meet someone for five minutes and just say hey does this seem like a good fit kind of thing but i would have thought we'd be involved in more of that with some of our clients who really do rely on marketing automation i think some of the bigger clients we've done a little bit but you're right it, it, it and mm -hmm. you know i like to think of that in a positive way is that the businesses are growing that perhaps they're using those internal resources for things like Mike said, strategy, things that really have mm -hmm. to stay internal. So, you know, and, and liking the way the partnership works, there's a certain amount of a trust that's already been built up and just saying, let's continue with that with the outsource and we're going to, you know, look at different and newer things from an in-source resource. Yeah, I think, I think the challenge with the vendors, which is kind of where this started off, the vendors charging more and more money and thousands and thousands of more potentially is that it, it's, it might be perceived as a higher barrier to entry. Mm. Um, True. And, you know, so, but I think more importantly for, for the customer to understand that like successful onboarding isn't free, right? So yeah. yes, you can have access to the platform and, you know, there's a turn on, but then beyond that, activating that and getting that properly set up, that onboarding component there is if you don't have the skill sets well then you need to find those skill sets either paying for them from the vendor or so i think there's a bit of a risk in in you know vendors kind of rushing to charges i also think that a lot of the vendors and some of the comments in here were um you know they're product companies to your point robin like they're mm -hmm. there to make sure the feature set, <clears throat> set works they're there to provide publicly accessible training documentation and you know if you're so inclined to be a professional in the space go take their certification and really know how to use their platform as well the challenge you know being a greenfield still a very greenfield environment with lots of churn is that ultimately that doesn't that doesn't help them i mean 83 percent. i think that was a stat that we were looking at recently of people that were surveyed, marketers that were surveyed, are looking to change their platform. Mm -hmm. And we like to say that like the best users and the worst users are using the same system. So yep. exactly. that's not a platform problem, right? It's it's the well, implementation I, usage. Yeah, and I was smiling when you were talking about the cost for good implementation. And I, my attitude is, it's always going to cost an organization. So you either pay for it up front to get it done right the first time, you are going to pay for it possibly later in opportunity costs and missed. Or you're just going to end up replatforming in a year, year and a half because that wasn't the tool for us and we need the new one. Mm -hmm. But one way or another, you are paying for it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, hopefully this is uh, um, going to be some value. I think you just maybe in closing some, some recos, like how would we, you know, Chris, you were, you're getting phone calls every day from another company that's either lost somebody or is looking to augment their team. Like what would you say in terms of, Obviously, the onboarding is key. We already got that. If you're rolling this out for the first time, get a professional onboarding. Well, the one thing I think that's that's positive is I think I think uh, organizations are looking at what what's happening like when something like that happens. I think that's a good thing when uh, a, a medium or, or or middle to large company is 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 losing people in that in that area. It's like they they don't. It's not like oh we'll just sort of find somebody else to pl to plug the hole. We're finding them thoughtful mm -hmm. about what it is that they're going to do a lot of times they are sort of you know having another look out there at, at what is out there which i think is which i think is really good um but i do think that you know just the place that we are at right now in this um evolving marketing automation um world is that there is um uh the vendors are are largely you know uh uh, pushing software and mm -hmm. the partners like us are looking to 
make sure that those that those platforms are doing the things that are expected of them. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have somebody sort of taking ownership over the uh, the outcome, mm -hmm. then you're going to be struggling with justifying that that subscription in a year mm -hmm. or two years time. So it's like that's where I think the expertise around the marketing automation platform has to be identified. If it's not internal, then it better be out, outsourced. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the, that's the element that I think a lot of organizations are, are finding um, that, you know, they obviously don't, they don't have that, that uh, resource internally. They need to find somebody that they can rely on in the longer term, make sure that they get the value out of the platform. So you're talking like an actual roadmap, not only of either use cases to solve for or, or things that it needs to do, it being the marketing automation platform, but secondary to that is who would be responsible for that, whether it's an internal resource or whether it's an external outsource thing, oh, the, an agency could help with items three and four. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. I think, you know, it's... We look at, I think the cost is interesting because the cost of these platforms is low relative to the um, human resource element that is, is involved to drive them, Definitely. right? And I think that's, to your point, pushing software and then we're catching 100, 100 mile an hour curveballs of well, what was sold and how is this actually mm -hmm. going to add value inside your business and what you did. That was what you thought it was going to do. And yeah, well, it probably can do that, but that's a... X amount of, of services to actually go make that happen. And the client's like, well, wait, we never really understood that. So yeah, I think if you're, if you're considering marketing automation or you have it, or you're looking at it, I think having a budget associated with it, whether that's, um, an internal head count, which may not be the right thing for you to your point, Robin, if you can't kind of mm -hmm. build all those pieces around the edges, at the very least having a budget to go support it in the right way. Um, and then I think relying on, um, you know, maybe the vendors don't have a lot of people they can refer you to, but relying hopefully on your partner that you're choosing to make the best decisions on how to use your hours. If it's going to be for, like you said, higher level work, Kev, like versus the building an email work, then mm -hmm. that that's something that, you know, you're using your, your, your time and your budget wisely. Okay. Well, that's good. We'll throw this in the, uh, we're going to put it right in the thread. We're going to hijack this thread. This is pretty good. I think that this one, um, well, it's got 34, uh, 34 likes and 25 comments. So we're looking she's at an a boost that, right? She is a total inspiration. Yeah. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks Sarah for, uh, for giving us some inspiration. <laughs> thanks. Bye everyone. All right.